Welcome back to the lab, folks. So we're going to look at the final installment of our investigation of the Zayway DSO 3D12. And one of the things I need to update you on is uh, the little frequency counter they put into it in this latest firmware version. I showed it to you in the last episode not working when we were putting in something like 60 or 80 megahertz. Well, this comes back to RTFM or read the release notes in this case, that frequency counter is only designed to work between 20 hertz and 20 megahertz. Let's have a look and see if it actually does that. So let's get into it here. Menu, ready there, and okay. So there it comes on. So we've got 200 hertz going into it now. And this also gives you an idea of the precision of the internal time base of this. The 200 hertz I'm running into it, it's coming from a generator that the time base is a GPSDO on that. So I, I know that's accurate. And uh, they claim that the time base in here was accurate to within 0.01% uh, and it, it, it looks like it surely is. So that's, that's good. It meets that specification that's been verified. So let's go, let's go down to 20 Hertz. That's pretty good. The odd time it bounces just a tad outside the 0.01%, but this is supposed to be at the limit of that frequency counter. Let's try it at 15 Hertz. It's pretty darn good at 15 Hertz too. It's not bad at 10 either, but it's more like 0.03%. All right, let's take it up to the higher end of it. Let's go right up to 20 megahertz. Okay, it looks uh, rock steady there. So we try 30 megahertz, live on the wild side. It's working fine at 30 megahertz. It's not doing as good at 40. Seems to be happy at 35, 36. 37 okay so it's it's good from 15 hertz up to 37 megahertz okay let's get on to testing the dmm function it's got a plain jane uh, scope here now there's two ways you can get into the dmm you can just press dmm here and while you're in that you can select you know whatever you want to, to measure um, i think we're going to start off with ohms today so let's click okay on that and switches to ohms, go through the range. Or um, you can get into it by doing a fast click on the power switch and going over to DMM. And when you do this, it comes up in full screen like that. So it depends on which way you want it. I like the default when you're doing it from the oscilloscope to be the small screen so I can see something on the screen, like a trace at the same time as I'm measuring a voltage. So that's pretty handy. It tells you where to uh, put the probes for the kind of measurements you're doing. So if we were to, let's say, select uh, one of the current ranges, let's go down there to amps. Okay, it'll tell you where to put the probes in. That's, and it goes in there. It tells you the maximum, 600 milliamps. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get started with this. I'm gonna go back to the ohms range and let's check these resistors here. Then we'll just check some voltages. I'm not going to get very, very deep into this. I wouldn't say this would be a main multimeter of any sort, but it, it might be a good secondary one to have around. So we're, we're just going to look to see if it more or less agrees with, with this Bryman over here and whether or not it reads some values through the resistance, diode and continuity. And yeah, we'll check all that out. Okay, so let's get started with that. Okay, so this should be around about an ohm and it is. You're not getting a whole lot of significant digits there. Okay, let's let's go up uh, 100.2. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. One count. Yeah, it's within the 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 reading scale here. It's right on. Yeah, 10k ohms, and it, it seems to be pretty fast. Let's see the 10 meg ohms. Yeah, but that's right on, and the ranging is it's pretty fast. You know, for a, basically for a free meter, let's say it's a, it's a $9 meter because uh, there is a version of this scope, I think called the DSO 2512. There's a few minor differences, but it doesn't have the multimeter and I think it's about $9 less expensive than this. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's accurate on the, the ohm scale. Let's try it now for diodes. So we'll go and select, go over to diode, click OK, and Let's see here, 0 0.269, 0 0.25, yeah, it's 
as expected. 0.62, 0.64, it's right on the money for, for these things. 1.8, 1.768, absolutely fine. 1.9, lights up all the diodes. It's within, it's within the error expected. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. That doesn't bother me at all. Let's see if we can quickly measure some capacitors with it. These are awfully long leads. 590, 20 nanofarads. 14.9, 486 for the 470, 26.6. Yeah, this should take a while. Okay, this is a little bit low. Let's see what the Ryman makes of this one. Oh, it's coming up at 16.3, so it's fine. I just wonder why it's not picking up the 23 picofarads there. It yeah, actually gives us a few more digits than the Bryman does on the capacitance scale. But uh, yeah, okay. So that looks so good so far. Let's, uh, let's look at some voltages. So we can, we can do them simultaneously. Okay, let's do uh, DC voltage here. Got 18 volts. Bryman is also saying 18 volts. That's good. Let's try three volts. So this is saying 2.997, that's saying 2.997. It's deadly accurate. Let's try something down in the millivolt range. 100 millivolts. So it's got a 100 millivolt scale. We should use that for our 100 millivolts. And uh, 93.2, and that's saying 93.2. Let's try that a little bit lower. Let's go down to under 10 millivolts. Last digit's bouncing around a little bit. All right, I, I'd say the DC voltages are good. We'll try some uh, small AC voltages here. Footage generator is putting out one kilohertz at one volt RMS. We've got 1.0069, we've got 1.004 here. 7.07 .07 volts RMS, we 7.08, 7.06. Okay, let's try something, let's try something down the millivolt scale. 100 millivolts, so 0.099. So we'll go over here to millivolts, 1.01.1, so 101.1, that's a pretty close agreement with the Bryman. Let's go down to, let's see, can we get down to 10 millivolts? We can, we're at 10.07, they're both in agreement. Can we even get down to one millivolt? One millivolt, so 1.02. The Bryman's bouncing around a little bit because it's, it's down at its last digit. So it's, this is actually a little bit higher precision than the Bryman and it's accurate at this level. So my estimate on the multimeter is it's a, it's a win. Let's go up to the higher voltage again and we'll put it on the mains to see what we get. I used to get around about 120 here, but we're interested in comparing it with the Bryman. And we're getting 120.8 versus 121. It lights up orange to let you know that you're dealing with voltages that could potentially harm you. So that's, I don't know if you want to call that a feature, uh, but there you go. Yeah, it the, the, the multimeter is it's, it's good. All right, let's go with the frequency generator. I'm going to have to get another oscilloscope up here, play around with that. Okay, let's bring up that scale a little bit here. And so we, we've got this generator. Popping out a uh, one kilohertz signal square wave. So that doesn't look too bad. That noise, I wonder if that noise is the generator or am I picking that up from somewhere else? That does seem to be the generator. Got a little bit of noise on it. Let's go back to the generator again. I guess it's a two way to get the generator as well. You can go with the generator button here. Or you can go with the uh, full screen generator over this way. Okay, so one kilohertz, two kilohertz, three kilohertz. Sine wave here. Now we're still getting that noise. So the signal generators is crude. Uh, there's a couple of things I, I don't like about it. I uh, just found out one, and that's the noise. I, I didn't see that noise on this thing's younger brother, the ZB154 Pro. Uh, but I see it on here. 
I also don't like that I can't change the level on it and I can't change the offsets. Yeah, so there are things I don't like about this little generator. It's nice that it's there though. I mean, you, you can do things with it like compensate your probe. You can use it as a clock for a little circuit. Anyway, let's look through the different waveforms and then we'll look through the frequencies. So the different waveforms, you know, the square wave, triangle. Triangle looks pretty good at this frequency. Of course it should. Sawtooth as well. Got a half wave rectification, full wave rectification, cardioid pulse kind of thing, and random noise. Okay, let's go back to sine wave and look at the frequencies. Let's go to megahertz. Look at it there. It's not terribly clean, and it's got some distortion there. You can especially see it on the bottom of the waveform. Now, it's supposed to be able to go up to 5 megahertz, but it looks like at 5. I won't go beyond that. We've got 10 megahertz out of it. Actually, 10 megahertz looks better than the 3. That's odd. It gets a little bit funky as the frequency comes down. Now it's looking pretty good again. Well, not great, but let's look at it down in the low end. We'll go to Hertz. Roll mode here. Have a look at that. So we're at one Hertz. Two, three. Yeah, it works. Okay, now some of the other waveforms here. You can see there up at the top of that trace there, that noise is still there. Now it's supposed to go up, I think it's to 2 megahertz with all the other waveforms. So let's see what they look like at 2 megahertz. And what do we have? What's the square wave look like at 2 megahertz? It's not bad. I've seen worse, but still uh, we got that noise there. So I mean, you put some filtering in to get rid of that noise and that's, that ain't going to look so good anymore. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, next week. Triangle still looks good. We've got some steps in it, but I guess, you know, with the limited sample rate of this thing, it's, again, it's not a $1,000 signal generator. It's, you know, something thrown into an $80 scope. Yeah, same sort of behavior across the, the spectrum there. Uh, it's, let's just say it's uh, not what I would call a signal generator. If you need the signal generator, you'd have to buy something else. But uh, if you just need a quick and dirty signal, it'll provide a, a, a quick and dirty signal. You know, but more than likely, you're going to have to put some sort of attenuator on it to get down to you know something you could put into an audio amplifier or something like that. One other thing I guess I should show you, and I'll leave a link to somebody who goes through, I think it's Zayway actually, they have a YouTube video where they go through the whole voice thing. Let me show you a little bit of that. is on right now and if you want to get his attention you say hello Zewe hello. and then you give it some instructions AC DC coupling okay, I see DC coupling now I think it's rather verbose to have to say AC DC coupling okay, I see DC coupling <laughs> but uh, yeah I don't know why they just make it AC DC but it's, it's, it's little commands like that I mean you can say uh, channel 2 on Okay, channel two off. Okay, channel two off. Now there's, there's only specific things you can see. So if you, have, you have channel two on. Okay, channel two off. And then you say AC DC coupling. Okay, I see DC coupling. It only changes for channel one. I don't know how to access it on channel two. And I didn't see it in that video. I looked at that video from Zewe. I, I might have fallen asleep, but I didn't see it. So there's some very basic commands and some of them I don't understand why um, they're so verbose. I mean, they could cut them down a little bit. But that's it. I don't find that feature... Okay, me too. <laughs> I don't find that, that feature very useful. Okay, it's It thinks I'm saying V2. Okay, me too. <laughs> I'm going to turn that off. <laughs> Um, so I don't find that feature very useful. Uh, first of all, it's very limited in what you can do with it. And uh, it sometimes mistakes it. You know, if you're talking to somebody else, all of a sudden your, your measurements are going to be off the walls. All right, folks. That's it. That's all I really have to show you today. And that's all I have to show you about this little scope. I hope you found this interesting. I hope it helps you make a buying decision. As for me, 
I did buy this, I paid for it with my own money, and I, I like it for what I'm going to use it as, and that is just some little portable thing I can drag around out to the garage, out to my theater room, or whatever it is I want. Uh, it's, it's gonna be handy for that. And I think for 80 bucks, I was money well spent. But uh, you need to make your own decision. Look at my videos, look at other people's videos on it. Uh, I know 80 bucks is not, these days it's not chump change. You won't buy a dinner at a decent restaurant. Yeah, I better buy a Big Mac and Coke for a couple of people, wouldn't it? Things are getting really expensive these days. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for watching the series. And we'll see you in the next video, which I'm pretty sure is going to be my little pickaxe tutorial with that module that we had made up by PCBWay. So we'll see you in that one. Bye-bye.